hit that swinging 121, 122 miles an hour, he'd have a mid-iron to that green. And it'd be game over. But I think he'll play far more defensive off to – he's very comfortable and he can do it pretty easily, hitting his three-wood off of 13 and drawing it around the corner. Same thing's true at 14. Um, you know, there's just a, there's a couple of key drives for Tiger. Off of two, for sure. What he does off of three – will be, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see his strategy off three. I'm curious to see uh, his strategy off of 10 um, and uh, and what he does on 13. Those are key drives for him. As much as anything, they'll say a lot about, you know, the confidence that he has in his golf swing. Randall, I mean, as we all know, Tigers won four green jackets with three different swings, and he's probably had five different swings on the tour. The swing he has now, um, how do you compare it to the Butch swing or the Hank swing? Does it, is, 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 it, is it close? Yeah. Well, the thing about Tiger is, you know, look, we criticize him or we're confounded by him changing his golf swing. But the fact is, every time he changed his golf swing, with the exception of the swing that he made under Sean Poley, he got better. You know, he, was, he was a better player in 2000 than he was in 96, 97. Um, he was a better player under Hank Haney than he was under Butch Harmon. There's just no two ways about it. You know, he won 33% sure. of the golf tournaments under Hank Haney. Um, you know, he was, he was, he was a better player. Uh, how would I compare the swinging as now? Well, you know, he, uh, it's nowhere near as good. I mean, it's headed in that direction. Sure. Uh, this golf swing is, uh, has the potential to be, it has the potential to be the third best golf swing he's ever had because, you know, the golf swing under Hank Haney, um, you know, it was his most consistent The golf swing he had under Butch Harmon was his most dominating or most explosive. I should say the, the second one under Butch. Um, but this one has the potential to be right there with it. He still drops down in the second half of his backswing. People love to say, well, you know, lots of people drop down, but but Tiger did not drop down uh, right. under Butch, and he didn't drop down. And I'm talking about, I'm not talking about when he changes direction. I'm not talking about when he starts moving towards the target. Even even as he's completing his backswing, he'll start moving towards the target. I call that the downswing. I mean, that's when the transition starts. I'm just talking about when he moves his first part of his backswing and the second part of his backswing, you know, the takeaway and the second part of his backswing, if he would stay taller and, you know, he's done a great job of shifting to the right and he's staying taller than he was at the beginning of the year, but he's still dropping down substantially in the second half of his backswing. And that creates and leads to so many problems. And it's that one move. If he could eliminate it from the last time we saw him play, if he shows up at Augusta national and he is maintaining his height, but it's not just his height. He was not only dropping down, he was moving closer to the golf ball. So right. you got to have room to do your work. And if you're decreasing the amount of room, you have to do your work. You have to make all these other compensations. So Tiger would make compensations by jumping up and, and jumping out of the shot, which causes a host of problems. It causes the club to drop to the inside, get underneath the plane. And if Tiger Woods is maintaining his height in the second half of his backswing, then he's got room to do his work. And, you know, he'll drive the ball beautifully and he'll win his fifth Masters. Um, and that's, that's pretty much all he's got to do. And it's not that hard. It's really not. When I said, you know, I, I fixed Tiger Woods in two minutes, that was allowing for, again, one sure. minute of us screaming at each other. Um, <laughs> You saw with his right foot, he's opening his right foot now to dress, and that's helping him load. And that's making a huge difference, the way he's being able to attack the golf ball. Yeah, I mean, right foot flare is so important because it allows you to turn, you know, your 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 leg clockwise in the backswing, which is huge, you know, it, it, which allows you to get your hip behind you and get your right hip behind you and allows you to load into your right side. So yeah, I'm, you know, it's it's he's made remarkable changes to his golf swing just since the Genesis. You know, by the time he got to Honda, his golf swing was completely different. By the time he got to Valspar, it was completely different. 
It was like the one piece of the puzzle. The only thing left is for him to, you know, and if, look, if I was talking to him, I would say, you need to feel like the back of your neck and your takeaway moves up and to the right. You know, it's as simple as that. You know, all you have to do is go, go look at Jack Nicholas in slow motion. And watch how his head moves up and to the right in his back swing. And, and it's, it's not just peculiar to Jack Nicholas. Annika Sornstan did the same thing, you know. Sure. And in long driving, Jamie Sidlowski did it. So there you have arguably the greatest female player of all time, arguably the greatest male player of all time, and arguably the longest hitter in the history of golf. All three had this move. You know, all three where they moved up off of the golf ball. And the reason it's so important is, one, it gives you room to do your work. Two, it allows you a free ride on the way down. Free ride. You've got two ways to create speed in this game, muscle and gravity. And those that drop down in their backswing rely then solely on muscle. But if you, if you, if you have an up move in your backswing, then you get to drop down. You're literally allowing gravity to help you uh, accumulate speed. So you've got gravity that gives you a free ride down, and then you can use your muscle. And you've got the combination of those two. There's no question. If you go back and look at how far Jack hit it, how far Annika hit it, Annika improved her driving distance you know, uh, by the most mind-boggling um, numbers that I've ever seen. To see someone go from a middle-of-the-road, middle-distance you know, middle player to become the longest hitter on the, on the respective tour. I mean, that's just never done. And, and she did it, and that's why she dominated. So Tiger did it. In 2000, he maintained his height. And more than that, his head didn't move. His body carriage didn't move towards the ball, didn't move towards the target line in his backswing. you got to get it moving, at least stay stable, but ideally move up and away from the target line. All right, Brandon, we got one more for you. We're going to bookend this interview. We started with some fun. We're going to end with some fun, okay? okay. We asked this to Keith Mitchell. <laughs> he had a very strong opinion, and um, we wanted to hear yours. So, you know, I, you can say thanks to us. You can thank us later off air, but, you know, we're growing the game. <laughs> and uh, we've got three ways, three initiatives that we think can grow it even more. So, number one, Patrick Reed wardrobe Sunday restrictions no red and black on Sundays it's done he's a Nike guy now Tiger's back enough's enough Patrick Reed no longer can wear red and black that's number one number two walk-up songs okay Keith made a good point he said can't do it on the tee box not enough time between players tee boxes are too close you got to do the closest guy and they tested this in Kansas City the closest uh, shot on a par three, they get their song played as they're walking up to the green. And number three, mic'd up caddies. What do you think? Mic'd up caddies. Um, wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is, think about it, Brandon. <laughs> wow. I, we have to all three of them. Um, you know, one, I, I look, I, I, I think uh, golf needs sort of a bad boy, you oh. know, and Patrick Reed in the nicest possible way, fills that bad boy. Like, you know, in golf, he's our bad boy, right? And, and what does he do that's bad? Nothing, actually. He's, <laughs> he's as time's gone on, he's become a fabulous sort of uh, um, media darling, you know? I mean, he's, he's interesting to watch. And when he's got the red and black on, I think he, he does it out of respect to Tiger Woods. At least that's the way I take it. It's like, you know, one guy has got the, um, you know, the, the, the guts, I guess, to wear a Tiger Woods outfit on Sunday, you know, in no way, shape or form. I mean, nobody did Tiger Woods. Nobody does well in that comparison, but, but I love that he does it. And I even think Tiger loves that he does it. You know, it's like, it's like a tip of the cap to Tiger Woods. Um, and the walk-up song is like, you know, the, uh, I think my, my good buddy, Eamon Lynch called, uh, you know, this, this invigorated fan that's following the game and yelling out all these ridiculous things when players hit, he called them golf bros. Um, <laughs> and when you do the walk-up song, you're, you're playing into the golf bros hand. Um, you're, you're invigorating the golf bros. And, you know, and I think the game of golf should do everything they can to sort of, uh, 
quash the golf bros. I think the game of golf is a lot better off of golf bros. They got to get these guys under control. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I don't. I don't even know how you do it. I mean, that's a, that's a. You know, you want fans out there. You want. You know, golf has always had you know its own sort of audience. It's not the typical sports fan. It's just not. And if people say they want to grow the game. Well, that means they want people coming to the game who are not golfers. And so, you know, this is like golf's own version of cognitive dissonance. You know, you hold in your mind two mutually exclusive ideas just as fervently. And it's like they don't go together. Sure. Um, and then Mike and the caddies, look, I'm, I already think there's way too much conversation between player and caddy. I mean, when a, oh. when a player walks up to a golf ball, I mean, as he walks up to the golf ball, he knows what shot to hit. He knows what club to hit. He knows, you know, he knows within a yard or two how far it is. He knows all these things instinctively. I think one of the worst things in golf is player caddy conversations. You know, it, they, they go on too long. Um, you know, they, they, you know, I, I, I think the timidity of, of golf professionals, you know, they've, they've turned over their swing to swing instructors, their body to, trainers their mind of sports psychologists now they're 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 turning over their strategy to a caddy it's like no you're the player you're the genius you're the one that you know knows what your body chemistry is doing it's like you, you know you're the one that can figure the shot out yeah do you need to every now and then bounce an idea off somebody who's just as vested in the outcome as as you are sure but these 20 second you know conversations that go on between player and caddy Sure. I think it's one of the worst things in the game of golf right now. I, Evan, I don't know how you feel about that. You want the mic up caddies, but Brandel's saying they just need to cut the BS and hit it. Yeah, I want you it. Know? I want. I like that conversation. <laughs> I agree with them. You know, it's probably better for their game, yeah. but for the viewer, I want it. So we, we yeah. might have to talk hey, off air about that, Brandel, but it's all good. When you're doing a broadcast and, you know, when a player and a caddy are having a conversation, you know, you lay out, right? Because... You know, you, you want to hear what they're saying. You know, you you want to hear, you know, because it is compelling. You know, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, we, we get to get inside here and, you know, know what the yardage is and, you know. Um, and I I have I have been involved in some nice conversations. Of course, I've, I've heard some very compelling. I watched a caddy talk a player into going for a shot over water out of the rough um, where – you know, if I was going to win the tournament if, if, if he hit it in the water. And I, I was convinced if this caddy was talking to him into going for this shot out of the, out of the rough over the water. I was convinced the caddy was talking him into hitting it in the water, and I was going to win. And it was Stuart Sink. It was his first win. It was Hartford. Uh, he drove it on 17 up on the bank. and I mean, his caddy absolutely talked him into hitting this shot. And he pulled it off, and he won. And... You know, yeah. So that was, I mean, it was, it was great conversation. So yeah, there's time <laughs> for it, but if you mic caddies up, you're encouraging these exchanges between caddy and player. Sure. And I think they're, while they're useful sometimes, for the most part, the player knows exactly what he needs to do. Almost the second he hit the tee ball, he's going to know how far it is you know, where the wind's coming from, all the nuances of the shot. And the more instinctual a player gets, the better he's going to be. Love Randall, it. you've got the par train mojo, so you're probably going to have the greatest broadcast of your career. We want you to have a great week. And Thank you so hey, much for coming aboard. The greatest masters we're of all not, time. We're not going to be there, unfortunately, but it is our goal to get there next year. Well, I'll be reading your tweets. Love um, <laughs> And Thank you. Uh, if, it, if it even has a chance of being the greatest Masters of all time, I'll, I'll give a nod to uh, your prediction. Uh, well, you you, you. you might have said it first. What, back in December? Back in December. That's, yeah. that's fine <laughs> prognosticating out of you. That's what we do. <laughs> Love it. All right, thanks, Brandel. We appreciate Cheers. you coming on. You have a great week next week. Thanks, Brandel. You guys, you guys right, take, take care. care. Enjoyed it. Cheers.